in simple harmonic motion, one of the most confusing parts of it is you've got all these different ways to get into a simple harmonic motion question and sometimes you don't know which way you should use or sometimes when you look at a question it wants you to go a particular way but you, you're not very comfortable with that so you try another way and it just doesn't work out okay so a classic example is many questions in simple harmonic motion say nothing whatsoever about time right uh, we're used to when you get like the a sine nt plus alpha or cos or something like that and you're like oh I put in a time value I get a um, I get a displacement, or I get a velocity, or I get an acceleration. And I think we're generally much better at that because um, we start thinking about it in terms of time. But frequently, good morning, but frequently we do not do it in terms of time, we do it in terms of displacement. So I want you to remember these two results. It's okay Paul, come in and grab a seat. When you think about your derivatives with respect to displacement, we have two particular results, one that's specific to simple harmonic motion and one that relates to all different kinds of motion, so long as you're on a straight line. Okay? So first we'll do this one because I think it's a bit easier to remember. When you know there's simple harmonic motion, there's a differential equation that relates acceleration to displacement. Do you remember what it was? It's a really simple equation. Yeah, negative n squared x. And of course, there's a minor modification to this guy. Uh, if this is you know, going about the x equals 0, the origin, if you're not going about x equals 0, we just change this to not x but x minus b. So we'll, we'll consider that example later. But this is a simple version, right? We know this is basic vanilla simple harmonic motion. But for all kinds of straight line motion, we have another differential equation that also has to do with acceleration. Do you remember what it was? It's on the reference sheet. It's this weird one which we had to prove and we went through this long awkward proof and I showed you in the one. Yeah, it's the one with d on dx of, what is this weird thing that goes in there? Do you remember? It's half v squared. And you might remember the half v squared comes from integrating v with respect to x and you get half v squared and you get chain rule and all that kind of thing. Okay. So, this is true only for simple harmonic motion. It comes out of sine and cosine. But this is true for all straight line motion, right? It, we just, where did that come from? It came from the chain rule. Actually, I think we used the chain rule twice, right? So this is always true. This is true for simple harmonic motion. A natural thing to do would be to combine these two since they're both with respect to x. You see that? So I wonder if this is ringing bells and how many of you could rehearse this proof for me because you do need to know how to prove it. If I say that this is equal to that, because they're both acceleration, okay, then I get this. Let's just write it out first. Morning. You've got this. Derivative with respect to x, a function. In terms of x, you're like, I know what to do with this. I will just integrate, right? So if you integrate the left-hand side, you should get back to wherever you came from. When you integrate the right-hand side with respect to x, what do you get? Have a think. So this minus n, negative n squared is just a constant, it's just a number. So this could be like minus 5x or minus 10x or something like that. So what happens to the constant out the front, the constant coefficient? It, yeah, nothing happens to it, just stays put. Uh, what about the x? We can integrate with respect to x. It's going to become, yeah, x squared on 2. I'm going to write it as a, um, a half x squared, like so. But even though I haven't written it, good morning, this integration that I've done is, um, is it definite or indefinite? At this point, it's indefinite. I have no boundaries or anything like that, which means I need to include a constant. So I'll chuck that guy over there. Okay. Now I can, um, I can tidy this up a little bit. I see this, this awkward half that's on both sides here. So I can just multiply everything like through by 2. And that gives you this, uh, minus n squared x squared. I will point out um, a handful of textbooks you might have seen. I'm not sure, I wasn't around when Mrs. Lee's proved this result, but a handful of textbooks, instead of calling this c, they call it half c, because if it's a constant, then half of a constant is still a constant. So they do that so that on this line they just get c. But it doesn't matter, because either way, I'm about to find out what that constant is. Okay? Now, pause for a moment. When you have an, an indefinite integral, right, and you get handed a constant in there, and your job is to find out what that constant is, what do you normally do? What kind of 
information to you. You generally need a condition of some kind, like an initial condition is the most common thing to go for. Time equals zero, and then x or velocity or acceleration equals something else. You pop it in, and um, that gets rid of all of your variables, and then you, you evaluate the constant. Okay. Now, initial conditions are where we normally go. But I don't have anything in terms of time here, so initial doesn't really make sense. So I need to think about something, some other condition that I know about simple harmonic motion that will allow me to put values into v and x and then give me a value for c. Does that make sense? So I need to evaluate v and x. I need some place, some place where I know what the velocity is. And then if I can substitute both those values in, I will be able to evaluate the constant. Okay? Now I want you to have a thought, think, what kinds of places do you know what the velocity is? Not in terms of time, what kinds of displacement do I know the velocity? And I want something nice and simple, right? Okay, so I've, I've got some choices, right? Um, I could say, oh, what about x equals zero? That's kind of it's kind of like t equals zero, right? If I put in x equals zero, I need to know what the velocity is to go with that, right? Do I know anything about the velocity of this, like the the maximum velocity of this particle at the moment? I don't know anything about this, right? I don't know if it's like a really slow moving thing, like a tide that goes up and down very gently, or I don't know if it's like a an electromagnetic wave which goes up and down and up and down millions of times a second. I don't know anything about that. So at x equals zero, I don't have helpful information for the velocity, right? Are there any other places in the motion of a simple harmonic motion object where I actually do know the velocity? Any other places? I already tried x equals zero. Hmm. Maybe you want to draw a, draw, draw a little, yeah, I think you worked it out. Draw a little simple harmonic motion for me, right? Like here's sine, okay, for example. That could be simple harmonic motion. We considered when x equals zero, that's these spots here, okay? We're like, well, it would be the maximum velocity at those points, but I don't know what the maximum velocity is. That's not very useful to me. Have a look again at the motion of this object. Where else do you know the velocity? Yeah, Drew, what do you reckon? Oh, is it the amplitude? Yeah, have a look at this spot. Or this spot. Um, this is the amplitude. These are the extremes of motion, right? One of the things, one of the few things we know about this completely vague simple harmonic motion is when you get to the ends, you stop moving. It's stationary, right? Um, what are the values for the ends of the motion? Being that I'm about the origin, what would we normally call that? This spot and this spot. They'd be these three extremes, and I don't know what they are, so I'm just going to call them negative a and a. That's what we usually call the coefficient of our sine or cosine function, right? So I can say over here, at x equals a, or I could put in negative a if you like, but can you see it doesn't matter because a, uh, x is going to get squared in a second. At a or negative a, I know what the velocity is. It's zero. Okay? And that's because when x equals a, that's an extreme of motion. So it stops. Okay, so this is why, why, why would I think of pulling this out? Well, it's because I don't know where else to look. These are the only times I have, or the only positions I have useful information about the velocity. Okay, so all I'm going to do now is I'm going to sub these in in the hope of evaluating C. So on the left-hand side, what will I get? Have a look. Left-hand side, it's just going to be zero because it's zero squared equals minus n squared. Here comes x, so that's going to be a squared plus my 2c. So you can see it doesn't really matter whether we call it half c or c because we're going to find out what this thing is anyway. Ta-da! So now I know what the constant is at this point. I can pop it back in and get a proper equation here with no unknown constants flying around. n squared a squared. And that n squared that's out the front of both of those is kind of begging to be factorized out, so I'm going to do that. And watch out for that double negative. So I'm factorized now. Um, occasionally you'll see this written with that negative factored inside. So you'll see it written like this. Either of them are fine. But the point of saying this, either of them, is to say that if you see an equation like that, which has nothing to do with the acceleration directly anyway, you're like, oh, I can recognize that that is simple harmonic motion and I can do stuff with that. 
Okay, so as a quick example, I'm going to pull out, you don't even have to look it up because it's so brief. I'm going to pull out two of the HSC questions that um, you have access to on Canvas that use this exact result, and I'll show you how to use them. Okay, so the first example, uh, they just give you an equation. Here we go. It's just multiple choice, okay, which is important. I'll point, point out why in a second. So all you need to do is state something about this, and they're particularly asking for what's the amplitude, what's the period. Okay? So I want you to have a look at this result we just proved, this result here. Which part tells me about the amplitude? Which pronoun rule? It's the, we even named it appropriately because it's amplitude, right? It's A, right? It's this guy. So whatever I can see there, <coughs> excuse me, is going to correspond to the amplitude squared. So there's its equivalent. So what would you say the amplitude is just by reading it off? It's just 3. 9 is 3 squared. A squared will be 3. Uh, sorry, A will be 3 because A squared is 9. Okay, that's really nice. Um, I'm also going to be asked about the period. Now, the other number here is n squared. So if n squared is 16, then n is 4. But that's not the period. How do I get the period out of that number? Yeah, very good. Normally, a normal trig function, it goes all the way up into 2 pi. But if you had, say, sine 2x, it goes up to only pi, right? You're dividing by whatever n happens to be. So therefore, if I see n equals 4 there, I can say, therefore, the period is 2 pi on that number, which, of course, just simplifies out, and you have your result, OK? Now, while I rub off the left-hand side of the board to make space for the next and the final example I'm just going to show you, uh, it's important to mention this is a multiple choice question, which is why we can just state it. Okay? But normally, you actually do have to go through integration and show this. That's why I went through the effort of rederiving this for you, because you need to know how to do it. Mercifully, it's quite easy to do. If you remember this, which is on the reference sheet, and this, which is the basic thing for simple harmonic motion. And you just need to remember to combine them. Okay? And then the integration kind of falls out quite nicely.